Welcome to Absolutely Not, the live podcast series dedicated to providing examples of setting personal boundaries at work and the vocabulary needed to name harm in those spaces. Thank y'all so much for being here today. Thank you for consistently showing up to the Absolutely Not community and growing with me in this space. The vocab words for this episode are harm, bias, and stigma. These words, their definitions, and more can be found on the resources page of my website. Feel free to reach out if you'd like more added. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp allows you to connect with one of 24,000 licensed therapists in a safe and private online environment. You pay just a low flat fee for unlimited therapy with your therapist. Visit www.betterhelp.com slash absolutely not for more information and to get 10% off your first month. Today's episode is titled, ooh, let's get it, let's get it, let's get it. You got me fucked up. I know, soak it in, soak it in, take it as much as you can. That message is brought to you today by my amazing special guest, Tamara Tamarisk Lock. Thank you so much for being here today. Hi, thank you for having me. I am. Uh, a, you know how much of a fan I am of you and your book, so I'm excited <laughs> to dive in today. Could you share a little bit about yourself with the audience? Hi, um, I am newly found self-published author, um, mother to two amazing kids, another reason for boundaries. Um, motivational speaker, uplifter, healer. I am just everything about us that's going to heal us and carry over to the next generation. Everything about us that's going to heal us. I feel it. I feel it. And I also feel it in the title, You Got Me Fucked Up. Where did the title of your book and this episode come from? The title of the book came from there just wasn't a better way for me to put that boundary in place after so many different personal interactions with people other than to eventually say, you got me fucked up. And I was like, you know what? I cannot be the only person that feels this way, feels they have wanted to say this on whatever, however many occasions and just felt stifled, didn't have a voice to actually say what they mean okay it's the word stifled that has me resonating with your message I mean and all the other words in the book as well but stifled is what it feels like to not be able to use your own words to set boundaries I know we've talked about this a little bit but how important is it to boundaries to be able to use your own words and vocabulary is very important because once you find your voice, you are able to advocate for yourself. And that is a very important part of setting a boundary, being able to say what you do and don't like and what you will and won't tolerate. What you will and won't tolerate. And I be- I'm a firm believer in that's what boundaries is communicating to the other people that you're in relationship with. What for me, that's what it means. What does a boundary mean to you? Or what do you define a boundary as? A boundary for me is, it says I reserve the right to say no. And that I do not have to engage in this activity. Okay. And you know, I take pauses, everyone. So this is a pause for me. I do not have to engage in this activity. And that's on levels, like that's on so many different levels. I talk about consistently on the show that sometimes when people approach me, I'm assuming that they want to fight. And I I react with, do you want to fight me? I do not have to engage in that activity. Have you ever had to say that kind of in real time? I will not engage in this activity. It's funny that you said pause because pause is my word in my house. It's, it's, it's the word with me and my partner, the word with me and my children, pause. It means this situation has gotten to a point where now it's infringing on a boundary and we need to take a break and come back to it. Other words, I will not engage in this activity. 
I love that. We talk about the pause a lot. Shout out Brittany Janae for bringing the pause to this space. But that pause allows us to process our emotions, to process where we're going, to reprioritize the relationship because somebody's relationship, whether it be with myself or with you, is going to be prioritized in this engagement. How do you stay focused on what's being prioritized? Like, what's the next step after you pause? After I pause, I have to think about, okay, are we sticking to the subject at hand? Is the process of getting to that solution going to be healthy? What are some next steps that need to be taken so that we both are heard and then we're responding and not reacting? another pause for me excuse me this is so much good information you said healthy heard responding instead of reacting a lot of the information we are given as children is to be reactive most in my community you know what? i'll speak from my own childhood it is to be reactive as soon as something comes across as soon as we feel an emotion to react to it instantly but the ability to process is so important. Where did you learn these techniques? <laughs> Trial and error. Okay. <laughs> Trial and error. My therapist. And you know what? Children. Mm. Have to be children because I am on this new conscious parenting, gentle parenting journey for a little over a year now. And it is all about pause and reflecting. So therefore you're responding and not reacting in the moment. And it is work. <laughs> mm. ah, shout out to my three-year-old son. On, on <laughs> it is so much work. The, um, the, they are definitely the co-workers that have have not read any of the policies, do not care to read the policies, and you definitely have to be like, oh, this is your first day every single day. Let me sit you down, read these policies out to you every single day. In, in actual organizations, have you ever had coworkers like that, that you'd have to reread your policies, your own internal policies to them on a daily basis? So I am that coworker that will kindly remind them, you're not my supervisor. And, and we just gonna leave it at that. So I don't have to keep reminding you. I'm just gonna lay it out front. You're not my supervisor. You don't sign my email. And I might say it a nice way, depending on who it is and how they keep approaching me. But um, last time I checked, that's the person that do my evaluation. So thank you, but no thank you. And that that is such a hard boundary right there. It's not even like I'm not divulging more information than that because you don't even have the rights to that information like you don't even have the key to the door you don't have what you need the juice the to even get through that door and how have those people reacted to that hard boundary um of course the, it comes with labels i'm aggressive i'm an angry black woman i'm not a team player i'm unapproachable um so it ends up passively aggressively falling back into my lap as being the one that has offended the other person because they were just trying to help. Hmm. Hmm. One of the things I've had to really, I, I cannot thank you. Like I have so many things written down. I can't thank you enough for just bringing all of this into this space. One of the things I have learned throughout this journey is how much passive aggressiveness is kind of, a part of American, like it's a part of like corporate, it's a part of a lot of structures, like the inability to communicate after conflict, not even conflict, just like not agreeing on something. The, oh, the only possible outcome is now for me to be passive aggressive. How have you been able to kind of separate yourself from that and not really fall into the trap of following suit in that like unwritten process? Um, I know it's the one situation I did have a supervisor and I was the minority, the, the face of the minorities in the company. And she made a statement that they always came to her because she was from Israel and she didn't take offense to it. And that I would just get along with the culture. And I had to remind her that was your choice 
to go along with that. It is not my choice to be a token in this company. So I choose not to engage in that. I hope y'all heard that, that we all have the choice. Like you very much, even if you are the only one in that organization, you will always have the choice to either assimilate or not and set your healthy boundaries in that organization. Has there ever been a manager or a leader in an organization who was there with you saying, yes, set those healthy boundaries, continue to set them straight. They are not your supervisor. Don't laugh at me. <laughs> no. <laughs> Everyone either, you know, they felt they needed that, they needed that position. It was the end all be all. They felt like they didn't have a, have a choice. They had been with the company so many years. And that's just never been me. Like, ever i can't corporate okay you're corporate i get it you have a different title than me but i'm still a human being and i'm gonna respect you the same way you respect me and if respect isn't given then we don't have anything to talk about i've always been that employee i don't know what to tell you (laughs) and shout out to everybody who has had that like shout out to tamara because she has always been that person And for me, I have not always been that person. I did drink the Kool-Aid very early in my career because quite frankly, that's all there was to drink. Like (laughs) if you didn't drink it, then I mean, I have bills to pay, I have shit to do. But now that I realize that isn't the only thing there is to drink, you can drink water. There is water and there's water elsewhere. You can create your own water actually. How did you get to that point though? I know that you said you've had it all your entire life, but what what did you have to do to continuously remind yourself that I can create my own water? I had to remind myself that I mattered because at one point I was people pleasing, but it still came with my feeling of you're a person just like me. So there was a job, you know, I stuck it out, kept over for the promotion. I was like, you know what? This is enough because I'm still me. I still have skills, talent. Let me plan my exit track because this is no longer working and it's no longer good for my mental health. I love a good exit strategy. I love, I love it because I know that a lot of us, just like I said, do you want to fight? And sometimes in that, do you want to fight? I'm like, oh, I'm going to just or fly or I'm just going to leave y'all because I have realized that this is trash and I don't want to be here anymore. But what Tamara's is telling y'all that you can't just fly away. You need to make a strategy. Were there people in your life who were essential and crucial in you having a really good exit strategy? I had a child. That brought me down a little to, okay, you can't just quit this job and call them and be like, I'm not coming back. No, you now have to plan for the other individual that you're responsible for. So that brought it down, but it also increased my level of boundaries because I had to think about what was I unconsciously teaching her and showing her if I accepted certain things. Hey, chill out. <laughs> um, hey, so recently I, I had a conversation with a friend and that was one of the first questions she asked me. It's like, would you let your son stay in a relationship if they brought this information to you or stay in an organization if they brought this information to you? Would you allow your child to be a part of the organization you're a part of? And I was like, yo. And if the answer is no, um, yeah, that's all the data you really need. Like (laughs) if you would not allow that, okay, I will process that on my own time, ladies and gentlemen and folks of the jury. (laughs) But thank you so much for breaking it down for us because I think sometimes we need that. We need to be able to place another person in our stead to really realize the abuse and kind of the behavior we are accepting for ourselves. I use the word abuse because the workplaces were a part of consistent behavior surrounding harm is equivalent to abuse have you ever been abused in the workplace yes yes 
And yes, I had a manager to consistently um, take customers from me so that he could meet his quotas and sales. Um, he reneged on a promotion offer once he found out that I was pregnant. So I had to take that to HR. Um, got into a screaming match just in front of everyone. So yes, um, but because I needed that job, I spoke my piece, but I stayed. And that was not healthy. Mm, and that was not healthy. I appreciate you bringing your experiences and kind of a timeline for when you know this is not healthy. Now that you know and you have a picture in your brain and you know exactly what not healthy looks like, what, what tools or skills or software are you using consistently to make sure you never go back to not healthy? I am making myself a priority. And that means, does this space support my growth? Does it support my individuality? Um, does this space keep reminding me of who I once was? Because yes, I own it. I did it. I was that person. But is this environment growing with me? Um, so if for some reason I am in an environment where I'm constantly having to say, do you want to buy? That environment is probably not for me. I have grown past that response. But if I have to keep bringing that up, there's something about this relationship that we're in, in this environment that I'm in that is bringing me back to it. a a undeveloped version of myself. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. I will process that on my own time as well. So thank you for that. <laughs> Earlier, you talked about being a minority in the space and still having the choice. What do you think are some of the difficulties minorities have in spaces when you are the only one? Why is it more difficult for us to set boundaries? Because either you are singled out because you choose to speak up for yourself, no matter how nice it may be, no matter no matter how pleasant it may be, if you speak up for your up for yourself, it's a problem. Or you're completely isolated because no one around the office looks like you, and it takes more energy to have those fake conversations than it does that you just stay in your office or go sit in your car and have your lunch. And did you say fake conversations? Yes. Um, and it may not apply to all of them, but you can tell. I even had someone, and this was maybe two years ago. She still asked me, could she touch my hair? This is 2019, and we still asking that question? Oh. Yeah. And, okay. While we know we do have the choice in those spaces, this is why it's so important to know that as whatever identity you hold that may be different from the space that you are in, that boundaries are important nonetheless, because, oh, okay, you know what? I don't, I don't have the capacity to process that, honestly, actually, in, in real time. So I will, what I'm trying to say is, even if you're the only person in that space, still set those boundaries, even if it means sitting alone in your, in your office, because I would rather be alone in my office than have someone ask me ridiculous ass questions like that every time we had lunch. And, and come up. Ugh, okay. But thank you so much for sharing that. And I think it brings to the space really why certain people have difficulty setting boundaries. There are a lot of expectations from society from the system, from the structure that things are built on, on certain individuals of how we're supposed to act at work and the stereotypes that follow if we don't. Have you ever not, or have you ever set a boundary with someone and them have a negative response to it? I know you talked about that manager in the screen mesh, but have you ever had someone had a negative response to it at work? I'll 
outside of that individual, I think that will that will probably count as the worst response I've ever gotten. Uh, another one besides that was, you know, just be a team player and, you know, smile and get along. Um, yeah, I would say that would be, that would have been the worst. Because mm. I grew from that, you know, mm. there's there's stages and levels. Yeah, you keep leveling up. And that, I love that you talked about leveling up because I, I used to work in a warehouse and I kept moving from warehouse to warehouse, but I didn't level up. If you like, I would still, I was still the same person and still be like, why are these people treating me like this? Like, I don't understand why I'm being treated differently. Why is it important to level up? Because leveling up will shed the bad habits you have for yourself, like um, accepting the bare minimum from people or allowing people to treat you a certain way. But with leveling up, you shed those things. And so now you have a different tolerance level. And it's not a tolerance for things that you will accept repeatedly. Mm. It's a tolerance for what you want for yourself. And then that just sheds a whole new life. So, so often we talk about on this show is the boundaries that you set for yourself or that you're setting for other people are usually one and the same. Like I... I don't want to be treated a certain way. And so I should not be treating myself that way. Those are the same boundaries I'm setting for you. Don't call me this word. Don't treat me this way. And I should be loving myself in the same way. What are some of the affirmations or kind of positive um, affirming statements that you tell yourself to make sure that you're doing that every single day? Um, I definitely remind myself that we're all having a human experience. And this person can only engage with me on the level that they see themselves. So it's just a reminder that don't take it personal. Now, that's not saying it works all the time because sometimes, you know, it stings, but that only shows you where you need to continue work at with yourself. But it, it is a reminder that this is just an experience and it's not actually happening to me. Mm -hmm. It's going to help me learn something else. Ah, this is not actually happening to me. It's just helping me to learn something else. And sometimes when I feel that sting in conversation, I'll remind myself, I'll write it down like that stung really hard. What the fuck did we learn from that? Like what is now in new conversations, what are we going to do to make sure we can reduce the percentage of us being stung like that again? Do you have conversations like, like that with yourself? Yes. Um, it's either called self-reflecting, some know it as shadow work, some know it as like a self-dive. Yeah, you take those things that sting and you notice the, okay, why am I feeling like this? What is it making me feel? Um, and what would I like that outcome to be next time? Like, what work can I do with that now so that I no longer feel that? Let me address it now. Let me address it now. So often there are systems or people that we are around that say, oh no, that didn't hurt that bad. Oh, oh no, that it's not really that enough to process. Like you should be fine. What Tamaris is telling y'all is every single time or anytime you have the chance to feel a sting or you feel a sting, please process it. Please do it preferably the same day or when it happens just try to process it as much as possible I cannot thank you enough for like this information people need this information who when we're talking about this information we're definitely talking about it from an uh, individual stance but could you share what you would want organizations to know so that they can encourage their employees to set healthy boundaries at work for me personally, I would say one thing would definitely be when an employee takes a sick day or a mental health day, it shouldn't feel like an interrogation to take their personal time. So it starts with the organization at the top because then it's going to trickle down. So if I say I need time, it should be just that. You being short staffed, that literally has nothing to do with it. And those types of things cause loyalty among people to not take time for themselves because they're loyal to this company. That's like the biggest boundary I can think of because 
Now you got stress. Now you got body age. Now you're not leaving to take your breaks for your meal time. You know, all these other things that come with it. So it would definitely be as much as organization, organizations like to say, like you're human, you're part of the team. Once you sign those, that, that um, onboarding paperwork, yeah, that changes. Oh, and I, I appreciate your use of the word loyal because honestly, in every organization I have been a part of, that word loyal looks a lot different. Like some people are like loyalty looks like you work 12 hour shifts and then you'll come in the next day and then not sleep. And, and for some people, loyalty just means I'll show up to the Christmas party sometimes places. But I think really defining that and speaking with the leaders in your organization or speaking to at least your direct management, what does loyalty look like here? If it looks like 12 hour shifts, Maybe that ain't me. Like, it's really not me. You should really think about hiring somebody else. Um, but if it looks like me just having to show up or say, hey, or volunteer sometimes, then that could possibly be me. I still, this sounds like a bit much for me, but <laughs> I appreciate you bringing in because we love to define words in this space. As, as we wrap it up today, I would love to hear your top three tips on how people can start setting boundaries at work. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, it would be always advocate for yourself. Um, and don't settle because that's gonna open up the door for repeat behavior. So if you're always picking up the slack for somebody else's work, don't start that because then you got another person coming in because they think you're doing it before you know it, you're overworked. Read your job description. Don't do more, don't do less. Okay, read the fine print. Use your sick day. I personally, it got to a point where I would take every Monday as a mental health day. No questions, no nothing. Just know I'm not going to be here on Monday. Because I needed more than two days mm. to get myself back together and be whole. Um, once you feel you've reached the ceiling where you are, plan an exit strategy because that means you've outgrown that place and it is time for you to go. And you will and can find something better and you deserve it. So move on. I hope that that is the permission you needed, whoever is listening to this, that, that someone is out there wondering if, hey, am I able to leave? I, it's not a toxic place. It's not awful, but I have fulfilled my time here I have filled my purpose here I I am now the whatever's of this department I don't think I can learn anything more here or develop or grow here you can leave like go ahead <laughs> just prepare them and that's part of healthy relationships like communicate with them like hey I I think I have filled my britches here my britches is full here I don't think I can bring anything else to this team wow anyway you're allowed to so love you um <laughs> thank you so much for sharing that with everybody before i let you go are there any last minute sprinkles you'd like to share with the audience um find your voice use it don't settle for less um and don't wear out your wealth like like the old people say don't wear out your wealth when it's time to go you go yeah Ooh, love it love it love it I do want to do a quick plug I mean we have talked about this book consistently but for those who are just listening to this via podcast um I'm holding the book in my hand you got me fucked up you are listening to the words of the author herself um the information to purchase this bad boy will be in the show notes so just click the link and you'll be able to purchase it from there but Oh, it is definitely a page turner and it has a whole bunch of um, journaling in here and exercises. And I mean, of course, you know, by the title, there'll be some cussing in it. But if you love Absolutely Not, you're definitely going to love You Got Me Fucked Up. Thank you so much for joining me today, Tamaris. It, it has been a pleasure, a joy, an honor, quite, quite frankly. Also, I forgot to plug, she was just in Blavity. Like, if y'all have not seen it yet, please go I'll, I'll put that in the show notes as well and when this is published i'll put it all the links in there but she was featured in blavity 
Hey, we love we love it. Um, but thank y'all so much for showing up. Continue to set those boundaries and say absolutely not to anything on the line. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to Absolutely Not. Your support means the world to me. You can always further support the show by leaving a review or visiting the support the mission page on my website, www.katrinastroll.com. My website is also where you can register for upcoming live episodes, watch amazing past episodes of Absolutely Not, and buy Absolutely Not merch. Yay! Until next time, keep setting those boundaries and saying absolutely not to anything unaligned. See you next time.